Welcome, friends, to our Worship at Home video for the third Sunday in the Easter season, that Sunday where we tell the wonderful story of uh, the journey to Emmaus. We'll be uh, reflecting together on that story today and it will shape our worship. If you would like to join in with the symbolic actions during this service, you will need a candle to light, a Bible if you'd like to follow along with the readings marked at Psalm 116 and Luke 24, and you'll need some bread, a, a roll, a slice, a biscuit or a cracker, whatever you have, something to break. This isn't a Holy Communion service today, but we, we break bread individually during this service to help us remember Jesus revealing himself to his disciples in the breaking of the bread at Emmaus. Today, our service has contributions from across the presbytery. Most of the prayers that we'll be saying have been written by the Shearwater Ministry team. And many thanks to them for resourcing us with uh, prayers during this most difficult of times. So now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We give thanks to God for the land upon which we worship. We gratefully acknowledge the first peoples of this district as we work together for healing and reconciliation in this nation. Sit with us, Jesus of the Lonely Cross, while we are apart from each other. Surprise us, Jesus of the empty tomb. Whisper our names as we keep our distance. Break through to us, Jesus of the wounded side. Through our locked doors, come with your peace. Break bread with us, Jesus of the open road. Make our hearts burn with love. Open our eyes to your life. May this light burn like a fire in our hearts, connecting us with the risen Christ today. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Greetings from Obos. Hello to our friends at Bairnsdale from the beautiful Cape Patterson. This is Arnie and Jenny. And we look forward to a time when we can meet you again face to face. But in the meantime, we have a simple message for you. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah.
traveling along with you and it's from the old i travel to the new keep me traveling along with you I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. I love you because you hear me. I know this. I'm not speaking or crying into an empty nothingness. Because you listen, I can speak to you. So I'll keep on praying while I have breath. The snares of death encompassed me. The pangs of Sheol laid on hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. I've had tough times. I've been out there in the, on the edge in all sorts of pain. That's when I cried out to you for rescue. You saved me. I know you did because I'm still here to tell the story. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. What can I give back to you for all your extravagant blessings? I'll honour you with gratitude in the quiet of my house and I'll make sure others know that I belong to you. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. As you look on us with love in this life, so you hold us gently through the passage of death. This I know. O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. Just like my ancestors in the faith, I will do your work because you have set me free. I will keep on thanking and blessing you and calling on you by name. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Let this affirmation ring out. We belong to the living God. Let it fill the places of emptiness. Let it resonate through the halls of power. Let it ring over cities and towns and echo through the heavens. Praise the living God. Stay with us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, night will soon fall. Then stay with us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, light in our darkness. Stay with us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel reading this morning is from Luke, chapter 24, reading verses 13 to 49, and it's entitled, The Walk to Emmaus, The Stranger on the Road. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, 
Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and they told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, night will soon fall. Then stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, light in our darkness. Jesus interprets the scriptures. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while we, he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, night will soon Jesus appears to his disciples. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your heart? Look at my hands and feet. 
See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these sins, and see, I am sending upon you what my father promised, so stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of the Lord. Stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, night will soon fall. Then stay with us, O Lord Jesus Christ, Remembering Jesus breaking bread with his two disciples at Emmaus, take your piece of bread now and break a piece of it after each part of this prayer of confession. God of all our lives, here from our familiar spaces, we can imagine being on the road to Emmaus. We can imagine the disciples' pain and confusion as they walked away from the city after Jesus' death. When we have walked away from hard places, instead of staying in the struggle, forgive us. We can imagine Jesus walking with them, listening carefully to their stories, acknowledging their grief. When we have chosen not to walk beside others and acknowledge the reality of their pain, forgive us. We can imagine Jesus' gentle teaching filling their ears and firing up their hearts with truth and life. When we have not listened for your word and paid no attention to the way you work in our hearts, forgive us. At the end of the day, Jesus sat at the table with them and broke the bread. It was in the breaking that they finally knew who he was. In our own brokenness, Jesus comes to us with healing and forgiveness and the power to make us whole. In gratitude for the healing presence of God with you now, you are invited to eat a piece of the broken bread and be thankful. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, our rock and our redeemer. 
Amen. It's been a heavy time lately, hasn't it? And this week I found that my soul had had enough of heavy crises and just wanted to play a bit. And as a result, I'm offering you a lighter reflection today. Specifically, I want to walk you through the features of my face mask. Yes, friends, I have a face mask. I brought it with me from Brunswick to Bensdale when I moved here on the off chance that I might need it. I was thinking there might be some residual smoke haze. Little did I know that before long, life was going to be all about face masks for a very different reason. This is a genuine Chinese face mask. It was given to me as a gift back in January by my sister who purchased it from a market in China while visiting her son, my nephew, who was living there at the time. Now, if I didn't tell you it came from China, you might be able to guess anyway by the glow-in-the-dark Chinese characters emblazoned upon it here. Yes, friends, my mask glows in the dark. These characters, which um, a, I'm reliably told by a Chinese-speaking colleague, go this way up. They say, tonight we eat chicken. I'm delivering this reflection from my kitchen this week because our gospel reading culminates in a meal, a meal shared between apparent strangers, something we can't do outside of our household groups right now. Face masks or not, there's no sharing meals with strangers in a pandemic. In the Gospel of Luke, two disciples walking down the road are joined by the risen Jesus, but they don't recognize him. There is a barrier between them, a mask of recognition. When they get to their destination, they invite him to dinner. Stay with us because it is now almost evening and the day is nearly over. And tonight we eat chicken? No, the gospel doesn't say that it was a chicken dinner, just that bread was broken. And in the taking, blessing, breaking and sharing of that bread, the disciples suddenly realize that Christ is with them. I miss shared meals with family and friends and with my church community. Those opportunities to break bread together and to know the presence of Christ in our sharing. I miss them. What about you? What do you miss at meal times right now? And given that we can't share meals beyond our households, where now is Christ revealed to us? He is with us. But where do you know him right now? When my sister gave me this mask, she explained that everywhere they went in China, there were all kinds of different clothing items, t-shirts, jackets, hats, face masks, with this same phrase printed on them, tonight we eat chicken. So she got one for me to bring me into the spirit of contemporary Chinese pop cultural fashion. What she couldn't explain to me was why the Chinese were all eating chicken tonight. So I had to resort to Google. And I can now report to you that this phrase, tonight we eat chicken, refers to a computer game. Now, I'm not a computer gamer myself, perhaps you aren't either. And therefore, like me, haven't heard of the most popular online computer game in the world, PUBG, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. You and I may not have heard of it, but apparently 18 million people play this game with each other worldwide, and half of them are in China. The game pits 100 players at a time against each other in a battle, and when, in the end, one player remains standing, the game announces the victor with the immortal words, winner, winner, chicken dinner, a phrase which in the Chinese version of the game translates to Luck be with you, tonight we eat chicken. And I can only assume that those words rhyme when you say them in Chinese. PUBG has spawned a genre of similar games, which in English are called battle royale games, but in China are known as chicken eating games. And I find it cute and amusing that I have ended up owning this now very useful 
fashion accessory which connects me to a subculture of which I otherwise have no knowledge or interest. 18 million people connected by a game. There are many, many more people than that, than 18 million in the world connected in another way. Around 2 billion people are remotely connected with one another by the spirit of the living Christ, the many members of the one body of Christ, united by his love across all the barriers that otherwise divide them. Distance, language, culture, theology, race, gender, socioeconomic status. In the gospel story, when the two disciples recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread at Emmaus, immediately he disappears from their sight and they are left with burning hearts. Similarly, we are connected to Christ, to one another and to all his people in the world by the fire of faith in our hearts, not by a presence that we can see and touch. How do you feel about that? In this time of great separation, is it enough to know the connection of faith? There's normally so much more that nourishes connection in our faith, not least shared meals. But we always have that heart connection with Jesus and with one another, even when we are not able to break bread together. Is that enough for you right now? I took my mask out for a spin this week when I went to perform some essential tasks in town. Not that I thought I really needed it, more just for fun. I did feel a bit self-conscious, but I remembered that when I have seen other people wearing masks out and about, I felt encouraged and supported by them. They are doing it for the health of the whole community. And so as I went around keeping a healthy social distance from people, with the potentially life-saving barrier of my mask between us, I delighted in the recognition that we are doing all of this, the separation and isolation, the two metres of physical distance, the protective clothing, we're doing it for one another. We may not ultimately all need masks if things continue to go well here, but I like to think that this mask, while a barrier between us, is also an expression of love and connection and shared hope for a healthy future in our region, in our nation, and in the whole world. And so, may the unrecognized Christ, known in the breaking of bread, invisible to our eyes and yet present to our hearts, may he encourage you in faith, support you with hope, and fill you with love, and may you be sustained by the spiritual connection with his body here and throughout the world. Amen.
Lord of all nations, let not our eyes be kept from recognising you as we journey through life. Remain with us regardless of our doubts or fears, and when you appear suddenly or unexpectedly, possibly in the guise of a stranger, remind us, Lord, that repentance and forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in your name to all nations. Sit at the table with those who occupy this isolation time alone. Let them know the delight of your company and the embrace of your worldwide family in Christ. Give hope to those who are away from home or who long to travel to be with family far away. Bless them with connection that fills the aching spaces. Bless them with courage to see this time through. Bless them with coping and kindness for themselves and for each other. Be a guide to those who find themselves meandering taking paths of trouble and danger, falling into wells of deep doubt and despair, wearing layers of anxiety too heavy to bear. Allow them to see and know you, Lord, each time they reach that challenging crossroad of decision. Let your spirit be a constant companion to those who are making their last journey of life. In hospitals or at home, and strengthen and comfort them who care for them. In prayer, we bring to you people who are hurting, lost and alone, whose names we know and many we don't. God of love, Spirit of truth, Christ on the road, be our companion in the breaking of the bread, in the waking from our sleep, and in the living through this time. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. They shall not grow old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget. Let us pray for the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. Peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss, may God give peace. God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian men, women and children whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who strive and seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. God give peace. For all Defence Force chaplains offering support, encouragement, acceptance, compassion and understanding, whenever and wherever it is needed, may God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and responsibility of leadership, be it political, military or religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. 
Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope. Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all people, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God who meets us on every journey, may the gifts we put aside today bring hearts aflame with hope. Uh, we welcome everyone to the service today, uh, those of our Bansdale congregation, but also those of our wider community friends and those within the Gippsland Presbytery. And I'm told that this is going to places in Australia and even around the world. So welcome to everyone and thanks for being a part of this service. Uh, we hope that you enjoy them and it brings a measure of spiritual support at this time. Uh, how much harder would it be uh, without internet during this shutdown? Now please remember to maintain contact with your fellow congregants, with neighbours, with those who are not computer literate and therefore may be feeling this isolation a little bit more keenly than others. And for those who usually contribute to the casserole bank, please do continue uh, to, to bring your casseroles in because we are getting quite a few distributions. So um, that's really important at this time. Now, many of you are asking if Reverend Ian Ferguson is staying on under these shutdown measures um, and whether or not he's still planning to leave. Reluctant, we inf reluctantly, we inform you that he will be leaving on the 10th of May, despite our best efforts to coerce him to stay, um, but he will be leaving then. So we have two more services and then we'll be wishing him a farewell. In the meantime, stay healthy and we look forward to being together again very soon. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, oh we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, oh we are marching in the light of God. We are living in the love 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 of God. We are living, living, we are living. Oh, oh we are living in the love of God. We are living, living, we are living. Oh, oh we are living in the love of God. We are moving in the power 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 of God. We are moving, moving, we are moving. Oh, oh we are moving in the power of God. We are moving, moving, we are moving. Oh, oh we are moving in the power of God. Sit with us, Jesus of the Lonely Cross, while we are apart from each other. Surprise us, Jesus of the Empty Tomb. Whisper our names as we keep our distance. Break through to us, Jesus of the Wounded Side. Through our locked doors, come with your peace. Break bread with us, Jesus of the Open Road. Make our hearts burn with your love. Open our eyes to your life. And may God fill us all with love unbounded so that we might love each other deeply from the heart as we are loved.
peace be with you and yours now and always may it be so in the name of christ amen